So when we get this result and we're told to health harder, it is hurting us. We go through all of your lab work, all of your health history paperwork, go through all of your food review, look at what you're eating, how you're eating, how you're exercising, and tell it to you straight. When I am doing activities where the goal is to enjoy the pushing of myself, my cycle tends to go backwards. That's too much on the body. Hey ladies, welcome back to the channel. I have one really long question today that I'm going to be answering for you. So buckle in. If you want to submit a question to this podcast, please, podcast, YouTube, whatever, um, please do so at danny at the HA society.com. But let's dive right in because Caitlin is asking for help slash advice in the email. And she says, hi, Danny. I wasn't sure where to ask this question, so I thought I'd ask it here. I'm 24, my last cycle was May 2022, and no cycles since then. I think it was due to restricting food, calorie counting, exercising too much, and just overall stress. I dropped to a pretty low body weight very quickly. This caused many health issues for me. Losing hair on my head, cold all the time, excess hair on arms, um, hormonal hair growth on chin chest, extreme fatigue, dry skin and nails, slow blood, a low blood pressure and pulse, etc. Some signs of PCOS, yes, and many signs of HA. I went to a gynecologist and told them what was going on. I had an ultrasound to check for PCOS and was told I didn't have any cysts or anything like that. They did blood work on hormones and thyroid and they told me everything was normal. I was told to do the progesterone test as well, which did not work. The doctor pretty much told me if I didn't, if that didn't work, then it was either cancer or premature ovarian failure. And that birth control was the only thing that would make me have a period. Okay, you didn't have any cysts and you didn't pass the progesterone challenge. Got it. Knowing what I know about HA after researching myself, I felt like that wasn't right. I never went back. Next, I went to general practitioner. She pretty much told me the same things, wanted me on birth control. I refused, but she also ordered labs, more labs, like white blood cell count and cholesterol. At the time, I was still kind of restricting and still exercising a lot, but eating more than I was. My cholesterol came back pretty high with my total cholesterol being 298, LDL 201, HDL 75, triglycerides 110. Um, my white blood cells came back pretty low at 3.8. This really freaked me out, but, had, but I had forgotten to test to fast for the test, so I wasn't sure if these were totally accurate. I've done that. The doctor wanted to retest, but she also recommended that I watch what I eat and exercise more, which I was doing almost to an unhealthy extent at the time. I went a few months just trying to recover, eating more nutrient-dense foods and calories and exercising less, but still exercising. I recently got some labs retested, this time while fasting, and the cholesterol was worse being 348, LDL, uh, just higher numbers. Um, after these results, I really freaked out. I went to a new doctor who seemed a lot better and we're in the process of testing for more possible PCOS symptoms and hormone imbalances that were never tested for before, as well as getting a referral to an endocrinologist who can help me find out if the cholesterol issue could be genetic as well as related to something hormonal. Although my, LD, my HDL and triglycerides are fairly normal. But I was wondering if these labs are something related to HA or possible PCOS and if it's common for people with HA to have high cholesterol like this. I'm at a point where I'm kind of backtracking with my eating, afraid of certain foods now in fear of making high LDL worse, and I'm looking for any help or reassurance at this time. Anything would be appreciated. Thank you. Good question. Yes, um, the answer is yes your high cholesterol is actually directly related to hypothalamic amenorrhea. And in, I have another video on this, I think. If I don't, I, it's in the, ha the Holistic HA Practitioner Certification, but I'm pretty sure I do, or it's inside um, the HA Society membership. But low estrogen causes high cholesterol numbers. So when we get this result and we're told to health harder, it is hurting us. So that there's that, I just put that out there. It is good that you're getting further testing done. I think that that's fine. As long as you trust the person reading the values and in interpreting what it means. It sounds like you have had PCOS symptoms. It's possible that you had those in the past 
and you have helped so hard to reverse them that now you have HA, which is successfully suppressing the PCOS and the PCOS-like symptoms. You don't have cysts, so you're successfully managing it, but you're creating a new problem. So it's definitely possible um, that this is your case. And honestly, Caitlin, for someone like you, I think you should work with us. <laughs> I think you should do a one-time consult at least where we go through all of your lab work, all of your health history paperwork, go through all of your food review, look at what you're eating, how you're eating, how you're exercising, and tell it to you straight. This stuff's working. This stuff's counterintuitive. Maybe you need some additional testing as well, but that would be my recommendation for you. I feel like, um, I feel like that was a long question with a short answer. So I'm actually going to answer another question. Um, but I hope that that was helpful and I do think you should go to the hasociety.com forward slash coaching and sign up. Our one-time consult is inexpensive. You know, it's worth it. Okay. On YouTube, you can ask questions in the comments on YouTube and I collect them. JVE Rig asks, hi, um, I just found your site and your YouTube pod and was, has found a lot of helpful value regarding HA recovery. So thank you. I've just started my reds and HA recovery two weeks ago and I cut out all training for two weeks now and increased my calories to about 800 calories a day. Oh, K cows. Yeah, calories a day during this time. I'm gonna say, yeah, you increase it by that much. So now you're targeting 3.2 thousand calories. Okay, I want to make sure my body reacts as fast as possible. So I will continue with this amount until I see improvement. However, I'm a triathlete, swim, bike, run for 12 to 15 hours a week. So obviously I miss this. I plan to carefully add strength training, heavier not to failure. I miss running the most, but I've heard that running is the most stressful. Can you explain this? Or is it only because it's harder in, keep, it's harder in running to keep the pulse in zone one or two? or could easy jogs be okay as well? I understand it depends on the individual, but just in general. Yeah, there does just seem to be something about running. It might be the pulse, the exhaustion, um, the kind of lack of rest opportunities compared to almost everything else. And I'm not a runner and have never been a runner, so I don't really get it, but, when I am having fun and playing sports, I am at my healthiest and my cycle is generally fine. When I am doing activities where the goal is to enjoy the pushing of myself, um, my cycle tends to go backwards. And this I think is very common in both running and in weightlifting. If you are someone who does like a CrossFit style, hit style or high rep, high volume, is a lot of women i'm gonna do 10 sets of 10 like that's too much on the body and most people are actually like naturally limited in how hard they can push themselves in weightlifting due to strength so like i actually lost my period as a weightlifter i was never doing i mean i was doing some crossfit too at a point but even when i was exclusively weightlifting but I was lifting very heavy and my maximum weight potential was very high, but my food was not high enough. So at a certain level of weightlifting, you can stress the body to the same degree. Running is available to everyone and everyone can get to their max ability of running, um, like their max potential of whatever it is today, today. Does that make sense? Like. If I go for a run, I'm gonna find out really quickly what my capacity is for that. I'm gonna get tired and it would have been a big push. But if I just walk over to the gym when I haven't lifted in like a year, which is true, um, I'm actually naturally limited by my central nervous system and its ability to push. So I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of play. That's something that I consider, right? I think that running is easier to overdo. I think that running is less fun for most people. Um, I think we like the high from the run, but we're not necessarily like having a whole lot of fun. And it's just, it's nuanced. I mean, 
I was in a pre I, I was watching a presentation by uh, Dr. Nicola Sykes, um, who wrote No Period Now What, and she was even talking about um, the exercise being a stomper, being the elephant on the hypothalamus for one reason or another. Even if you bring yourself up out of the calorie deficit, but you maintain the exercise, it does continue to be a problem for most people with getting that um, that signal to turn back on. So, it's not recommended until you've recovered to start adding things back in. I think you're just going to like delay your process and make it more difficult. Um, I don't know. I hope that helps. It's not a lot but it's something. Okay, let's do another one. Iona, I really wanna become pregnant very soon. Is it however too much to go for light walking under 10K steps daily? It distresses me very much and it clears my mind. Um, let's just say you should probably keep it like under 4,000 steps. This is applesauce. If I gained 20, plus pounds and overshot my healthy weight, no exercise anymore and still no period, eating 3,000 to 3,500 a day. How many more months of this? And why would it not be a good idea to just take the pill and get a period? Maybe that will flick a switch in my brain and my body will just take over. Um, okay, if you're eating 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day for the average person, that's gonna be a really great number to hit. So if that's not working for you, I would get more labs and do more reviews. I would make sure you know for absolute certain that that's the amount of calories that you're eating. But I can't really say a whole lot without more context. I just don't really have context. But um, to answer the question about the pill, people talk about both taking progesterone, 10 days of like a progesterone challenge. Um, maybe that will kickstart the uh, cycle and the contraceptive pill. Neither are going to really kickstart your cycle. They're going to introduce hormones into the system. They're going to take over. They're going to cause things to happen. And then you're going to take them away and it's going to go away. Never have I heard someone say, I started taking the pill, my amenorrhea went away because once you start taking the pill, you have no idea if your amenorrhea went away. Now you're taking the pill. So you have, you don't know that, you, that it's gone. Like that, that opportunity to know if you're naturally cycling is gone with the pill and the pill is not helping you produce the actual hormones and have the process happening how it's supposed to be happening that is beneficial in the first place. It is not actually about the bleed. It is about the whole system working and the pill is only one chain in the system. You know what I mean? Progesterone, I have actually met people where I, they did the progesterone challenge and it kickstarted their period and they got two cycles. So yes, um, for some people, very few, I've only met two people, they can take the progesterone challenge, get a menstrual cycle and get one or two more, but then it went away again. So I'm yet to see that be beneficial. I have a video on that topic as well, progesterone or Provera for um, getting your period back and I'll link to it. Cool. That's a great question. Applesauce, thank you. Should we do one more? What do you think? Okay, Judy. Judy says, hello, I have some questions regarding exercise during pregnancy, after HA or getting pregnant during recovery. I used medication for nine months, Provera and Clomid. We were just talking about Provera. And started using an estrogen support two months ago and the second month I got pregnant. Long story short, I lost my period in 2018 and I didn't have a natural cycle without medical intervention. This year, we decided to try and get pregnant and I made some lifestyle changes along with the medication I was using. I stopped exercising as intensely about two months ago and food has not been an issue. I did, however, start eating carbs with every meal. I am currently my first trimester. Is Pilates safe for me or light weightlifting? <laughs> Thanks, I'm thinking of incorporating th exercise three days a week and stretches in the morning. I was just having a giggle because that was a lot of context for that 
like for that question. Um, I actually have multiple videos on exercise during pregnancy. So guess what? They're going in the show notes because I have answered the question. Um, and it's a good question and I have a lot, lot, lot to say on it. So I think that you would really enjoy that. And yeah, if you have any other further follow-up questions, guys, please post them below. Send me an email, danny at the HA Society dot com i look forward to answering it and i think that's something that a lot of you guys would really enjoy if you haven't already is checking out our master class we run them regularly so if you go to um our free master class it's called recover and get pregnant naturally and i actually walk you through how we take people from no period to a period in four to ten weeks on average obviously like a caveat but on average lots of case studies i take you through everything that you need to know how to do it um i tell you about some certain testing you can do that can be really helpful and it's just a really great session you're welcome to join it at any time that we're hosting it and you can find that one at the hasociety.com forward slash masterclass and i think you'll really learn a lot it's a free class i'm hosting it and i would love to see you there so check it out the link will be in the show notes and i hope you guys have a great day